After spending the day with the Chevy SS, here are some of the things we hate about it. First, let me talk about the looks. It's not that stunning of a car, honestly. To most people's eyes, it looks like a Chevy Malibu. And it's got too much chrome everywhere. They could have done without that. They could have made it look a little bit more aggressive. This car is compared a lot to an E39 BMW M5. And that car, even though it's more than 10 years older, it looks a lot better in my opinion. So pretty bland, not that good looking, too much chrome. Eh. Yeah. Something else is, this has the previous generation Corvette LS3. While it's a great engine, it makes great power, it sounds good. The one problem is, now that the LT1 is out, it's got all the fancy new technology, direct injection, all of that stuff. That new engine is so much more efficient. Sure, don't complain about MPG in a big muscle car rear drive sedan. Yeah, this gets 14 and 21, which is fairly abysmal now that you can get such good fuel economy in the new Corvettes with the new GM V8s. A little bit of an issue, not a deal breaker, but could be annoying. Yeah, but I mean, if they put the new Corvette engine in this instead of the old one, they'd have cylinder great. deactivation, it'd yes. be more powerful, and yep. I think it'd be a much better car. So yep. if they do that in the future, if they try to keep this alive, mm -hmm. I think it, they could really improve it. Yep. The car has two transmissions, an automatic and thankfully a manual. This car is not equipped with a manual. That is the only way to go because honestly, this automatic sucks. <laughs> it is way too slow to respond. And the thing I've noticed a lot about most Chevys is the paddles lag really badly. And in a car that's supposed to be sporty, having instantaneous shifts is a huge plus and makes you feel like you didn't make a massive mistake not buying a yeah. manual. In this case, I think, unless you really can't drive, a manual but if you can't drive a manual I don't think this car would be for you anyways because it's meant for enthusiasts mm -hmm. don't like the automatic at all that was pretty much the principal criticism of SS when it came out they didn't offer a manual until this model year so now that they do I don't know why in the world you would still out for the don't, automatic don't, don't do buy it. the automatic don't buy the auto from one perspective, all the comfort, technology, luxury features in this car make it great. I mean, heated and ventilated seats, backup camera, self-parking, all that stuff is its epic. But from a performance perspective, why the hell do I want it? Just throw it all out. It'll make the car way lighter. At 4,000 pounds, it's kind of heavy. It feels big. The magnetic ride, everything else, steering, everything comes together to mask it pretty well. It's still fun and tossable, but just imagine how much better this car would be if you lost two, 300 pounds. Yeah, for instance, the E39 BMW M5 that's compared to this car a lot, 14 years older, and it's still lighter. We've come a long way with technology, with aluminum integration into yep. cars. This could have been lighter, and if it was 400 pounds lighter, it would be such a better car, and I think it would have sold a lot better yep. as well. Unfortunately on this car, unlike the Corvette, which has this lovely touchscreen where you press a button and has a hidden compartment where you can stash all your drugs, you've got a stationary screen. So if you're into that sort of thing, it's not the car for you. Well, I hope you found this video informative. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Look forward to seeing you next video.